hi guys welcome to today's session and today we are going to discuss about sulfur dioxide pollution and in this session we'll see a background about sulfur dioxide pollution and then we'll discuss the sources of uh, so2 uh, and uh, then we'll discuss in detail uh, the sulfur dioxide pollution in india how it is affecting our country and uh, then we'll discuss about this particular technique called flue gas desulfurization and uh, then uh, we will discuss uh, what are the actions taken by the government uh, to face out sulfur dioxide pollution in india so that's how i plan this uh, session let's now start so sulfur dioxide emissions are a significant contributor to air pollution high concentrations of sulfur dioxide in the air uh, generally lead to formation of other sulfur oxides and uh, sulfur oxides can react with other compounds in the atmosphere uh, to form small particles and these particles uh, can contribute uh, to particulate uh, matter pollution uh, which is a major concern in our country especially and small particles may penetrate deeply into the lungs and in sufficient quantity can contribute uh, to health problems and uh, air pollution is a huge uh, public health concern with uh, 91% of world's population living in areas where outdoor air pollution exceeds guideline limits by world health organization and as a result 4.2 million people die prematurely every year due to air pollution so that is uh, uh, the background that is a background about uh, this sulfur dioxide emissions now uh, we will discuss what are the sources of uh, sulfur dioxide the greatest uh, source of sulfur dioxide in atmosphere is the burning of fossil fuels in power plants and other industrial facilities and other sources include industrial processes uh, such as extracting metal from ore natural sources such as volcanoes and locomotives ships and other vehicles and heavy equipment uh, that burn fuel with high sulfur content so these are the major sources of uh, sulfur dioxide and uh, now we'll discuss what is the condition of sulfur dioxide in india how badly it is affected in our country according to a recent report by greenpeace international which is a which is an environmental ngo india is the largest emitter of sulfur dioxide in the world uh, and india contributes over more than 50% of global anthropogenic emissions the primary reason for india's high emission output is expansion of coal based electricity generation over the past decade and according to the report five of the top 10 sulfur dioxide emission hotspots from uh, coal or power generation industry across the world are in india and the major sulfur dioxide emission hotspots in india are singroli in madhya pradesh neiveli and chennai in tamil nadu uh, thalchar in odisha korba in chatisgarh kutch in gujarat uh, ramagundam in telangana and chandrapur in and koradi in maharashtra and uh, uh, so these are the emission hotspots as uh, detected by nasa also in monitoring instrument satellite and so that is uh, 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 the sulfur dioxide presence uh, in india and uh, now we'll discuss a technique called flue gas desulfurization flue gas desulfurization or fgd is an air pollution controlling uh, mechanism in india vast majority of coal based power plants lack flue gas desulfurization technology and this works like sulfur dioxide in flue gas from fossil fuel power plants can be controlled by means of an absorption process and that absorption process is called flue gas desulfurization and uh, fgd systems may involve wet scrubbing and dry scrubbing that are the two methods of fgd systems and in wet fgd systems flue gases are brought in contact with an absorbent which can be either a liquid or a slurry of solid material and the sulfur dioxide dissolves uh, or reacts with the absorbent and becomes trapped in it and in dry fgd systems the absorbent is dry pulverized lime or limestone once absorption occurs the solid particles are removed by means of back house filters so that are the two methods the dry fgd and uh, wet fgd systems and uh, as per the greenpeace report in india there has been an increase of 
sulfur dioxide emission at already existing hotspots and new sites generating emissions are emerging across the country which is of great, great concern and the Union Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change had for the first time introduced sulfur dioxide emission limits for coal fired power plants in December 2015. However, Supreme Court order changed the deadline uh, for installation of FGD technology in power plants from 2017 to December 2019 in Delhi NCR and till 2022 for other parts of the country. Environment experts have called for strict action on coal power plants as it is not clear whether power plants will meet even the extended deadlines to comply with pollution limits both in Delhi and around the country. Uh, so that is uh, about the FGD system and its status in India. Now we'll discuss what are the actions taken by the government to control sulfur dioxide pollution in India. The Central Pollution Control Board CPCB has sent shockhouse notice to 14 thermal power plants for not complying with the 31st December 2019 deadline to limit sulfur dioxide emissions. The CPCB has the power to impose steep fines or shut a unit under the provisions of Environment Protection Act 1986. To limit particulate matter, sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide emission from thermal plants, India has put in place a phased approach that directs coal-fired units to put in place measures to limit pollution by December 2022. As per the Center for Science and Environment estimates, these norms can help reduce PM emissions by about 35%, uh, nitrous oxide emission by about 70% and sulfur dioxide emissions by more than 85% by 2026-27. Uh, so which is against a business as usual scenario with no pollution control technologies. So these are the actions uh, taken particularly by government uh, to cope up with uh, sulfur dioxide pollution and uh, that's all about uh, this topic guys uh, we'll meet tomorrow with another topic thank you for watching this lesson